Hey, Dude Yourself Junkie 369 here, and this is my first video in a series covering reloading. This first video is going to look at some equipment and what you should consider when buying to get started loading your own ammunition. I have a couple of friends just getting into reloading and figured I'd put up my perspective on reloading in this video. One of the friends is looking at trying to make rounds that are cheaper than off the shelf ammunition, and the other is wanting to get the best accuracy out of their rifle. And in this series, I will try to cover both. I know when I first got into reloading, it was for the increase in precision over the factory ammunition, but it also became a cheap way to shoot and a pretty good hobby. I tried to learn by watching some videos at the time, but in the end, I just had to buy some manuals and get into it to actually figure everything out. So when I started, I went cheap as I could since I was still in college, and that really pushed me toward the single stage presses. I could have been cheaper and purchased a Lee hand press kit, but I felt it would be too limited for what I wanted to do. So I ended up purchasing a Lee breech lock challenger kit. Mine was the 50th anniversary kit, and it came with a single stage press that you see here. This type of press just does one operation with each cycle of the press handle. The operation performed is dependent on which die is currently loaded into the press. The next step up would be the turret press, an example of it shown here. The turret holds four or five dies depending on which one it is and can be indexed manually or automatically. This speeds up the reloading process a little since you can set up a plate with dies specific to each caliber that you reload and then just switch the plates rather than switching the individual dies as you have to on a single stage press. And it's also possible to run multiple operations on a case by operating the lever multiple times and rotating the turret rather than running each case through an operation before switching to the next step. This comes at an increase in price and complexity and sometimes a loss in strength and some flexibility. It might not handle some of the larger cartridges that a single stage could and the press probably has some flex during the resizing and seating or crimping of the projectile that might cause a slight variation between rounds. These seem to cost about a hundred dollars more than the same brand single stage press. More complicated but faster than the turret press is the progressive press. At the heart of this setup is a turret press with additional attachments to do everything from feeding empty cases, resizing, priming, charging, seating the projectile, and crimping. Once running, a new round will drop out with each pull of the press handle since multiple functions are being performed on multiple rounds in various stages of construction. Setup for the reloading is really complicated with these and usually requires some tuning to get everything working properly. Setup of a progressive press could take as much as 8 hours, but once it's tuned to that cartridge, you may not want to switch it to another type of cartridge. If you do, it could cause problems with the operation of the press. Most people can use these to build up to 500 rounds per hour, but there is some case prep that you'll probably want to do before using this press, and that's not included in that time. Decapping and cleaning would be two of the most important, and some also resize using a single stage press and then trim the cases before loading them into their progressive press. These setups cost at least $200 for the Lee brand and quickly jump up to the $500 and up range. If you shoot a lot of pistol and three gun matches, this is probably the setup that you'll need. As far as brands in order of pricing, there is Lee at the bottom, followed by Lyman, Hornady, RCBS, and then probably Dillon being the most expensive. A lot of people will refer to RCBS as a rock chucker. I went with the Lee because of the price. They do use a lot of plastic, but I have yet to break anything, and if I did, it'd be really cheap to replace. The press itself is solid, and I've even used it to press in a bearing or something car related because I didn't have the correct tool for the job at the time. If you take time to read all the reviews out there, it becomes apparent that everyone has their favorite and that they swear it is the best and 
they also have a brand that they hate. I'm convinced that one is not better than the other, and they all have their unique problems, especially when you look into the progressive presses. Just research the problems people have had with the Hornady lock and load powder measure setup, and then compare it to the RCBS. They're exactly the same. So pick what you can afford, then defend your brand choice with your life and trash everybody else's choice in the true internet fashion. One thing about brand is dyes from one company are usable in another brand of press. So you can use your lead dyes in your Hornady press. As cheap as the lead dyes are, some have seen the most concentric loads they've made out of a lead die. That is how straight the projectile is in the case. The kit I purchased cost $145. With that, you'll get the breech lock bushing single stage press, which is capable of reloading almost anything except for maybe 50 BMG. What really makes this a great kit and a deal is it comes with almost everything you need to start reloading. In addition to the press, it includes the powder measure, a funnel, and the 50th anniversary kit has the Lee Safety Prime system. These hold your primers and are attached to the side of your press. With this setup, when priming is taking place, the primer is isolated from all the other primers in the system. The primers in the feeder are physically separated from the one being seated in the case by distance, and the one being seated is shrouded by the case and the press ram, avoiding a possible chain reaction if the one being seated goes off. This is the most dangerous part of the reloading process since the primers are actually an explosive. When they're being made, the mixture itself is kept wet to avoid accidents. And one going off can set others off. The kit includes a scale for checking your charge weight. I use this to verify what my powder measure is dispensing. Once the measure is set up correctly and you get used to using it, you only need to verify every few rounds, sometimes every 20th round, that your charge weight is correct. There are a lot of negative reviews on this particular scale, but most of them seem to stem from its sensitivity and not knowing how to use it. In the Reloading Basics video, I will cover some of the common pitfalls people run into using this scale, which results in the bad reviews. Here I have the scale zeroed out. To show you how sensitive it is, I'm going to take some Varget powder and tweezers and place one granule at a time into the pan on the scale until it moves out of balance. As you can see, it only takes four individual granules of Varget powder to cause a change in the scale reading. This misalignment corresponds to about a tenth of a grain, which is a unit of mass used to measure powder that does not relate to the powder granules themselves. The kit comes with resizing lube. This is put on the cases to keep them from sticking inside the resizing die. If you don't use the lube, the case could stick inside the die. You don't need lube though if you're going to only do neck resizing or use carbide dies. The kit includes a primer pocket scraping tool. When the primer goes off, it leaves a black residue inside the pocket that should be scraped out to allow the new primer to be fully seated inside the pocket. It also includes a chamfer tool. After you've resized the case, you should trim it to length and that will leave a squared off edge with a burr on it. This tool removes the burr from the inside of the neck and the outside of the neck. The kit includes one cutting head for trimming cases. This part is cartridge specific and sold separately. I'll talk about it in a minute. The kit includes the locking stud. This can be chucked into a drill for use while trimming. This part is cartridge specific and sold separately as well with the piece on the cutting tool. This is everything in the kit. You can go with another brand. A different brand will usually start off at double the price depending on what brand it is and it might include some different items or exclude some items. For example, it might include an electronic scale instead of the balance beam scale. 
Now I did say this kit includes almost everything you need to get started. One thing that you will need to purchase separately are the dies. These are specific to what cartridge you are reloading. This set is a Lee Pace Setter set. This kit is $32. It comes with a case holder for the press, a powder dipper, which I don't have here, and I don't use it since I have the powder measure. It comes with a bullet seat, which has a built-in roll crimp, and a factory die, which is what I use instead of the roll crimp, and a decapper full-length resizing die. In the basic reloading video, I will cover what each one of these does and how to set them up. But this is the basic setup that you'll need to start reloading. Other sets might include a neck only resizing die or not include the factory crimp. This is my 223 set, which I full resize every time since it's used in a semi auto rifle. And I prefer the factory crimp to the roll crimp and believe it is a superior crimp. To use dies on the breech lock press, you'll need a set of bushings. These come in a package of two for $10. You will need two sets to handle most of the die sets that you buy on the market. These allow you to set up your dies and remove them without having to go through the setup next time you want to use the die in the press. If you're using cases that have been previously fired and may have been military brass or something else with a primer crimp, you may need to remove that crimp before reloading. For that, I use a primer pocket reamer. This one's about $10. If you leave that crimp on there, when you try to seat the primer, it won't seat properly and you will end up with a mangled primer that is not flush like this one here. You will also need a case holder for the locking stud and then this piece, which is the piece that controls the case length when you're trimming the case. To use it, you will lock the case into the case holder, stick the cutter into the mouth of the case, and when the cutter bottoms out on the locking stud, the case has been trimmed to the length that meets specification. There is no way to trim the case too short unless you use the wrong cutter or break the end off the cutter. Those two pieces are sold in a cartridge specific kit for about $12. You also want to get a set of calipers. These mainly will be used for setting cartridge overall length or COL. You can get a cheap digital set for $22. This one I'm showing you is from Cabela's obviously. That's everything you really need to start reloading minus data which can be found for free online. If you do use the online, only use manufacturer's published data, not something you just find on a random forum somewhere. And the round components needed to actually build up the cartridges, the cases, the powder, the projectiles, and the primers. This kit I've shown you here with all the additional tools that you need will cost about $241 total. Some of the tools that aren't needed but are nice to have include a reloading block or tray. This will hold your cases upright and keep them organized while you're going through the reloading process. This one's about $7. It has holes for 50 cases, either small or large. And if you want, you can take a block of wood and a drill and make something just as good for a lot less money. I also have a case lube pad. This is a thin plastic case with a foam pad inside. You pull the lid off, load the pad up with lube, put 10 or 12 cases on it and roll them just once, coating them in lube. This speeds up the process over applying lube to each case individually. It costs about $23 and comes in a kit that includes some lube, the pad, two neck case brushes. Also, it's nice to have some cartridge holders. You can save them from buying off the shelf ammunition or if your friends buy off the shelf ammunition, grab theirs. Or you can buy some boxes like this one 
These are available in 20, 50, or 100 count boxes and cost anywhere from two to four dollars. It's also nice to have some Tupperware for storing empty cases. I'm not sure what this even cost. I just stole it out of the kitchen. If you do that, don't let your wife find out about it. If you don't have these, you can also just use some plastic Ziploc bags. You should also consider a bullet puller for breaking down rounds. This one was $22. This is a hammer that you stick the round into the top and clamp it down to hold it in place. Then you hit the hammer on a hard surface. The inertia will cause the bullet to come out even when it is crimped. And the powder will dump into the hammer along with the projectile. Then you can deal with the separated components how you need to based on what you're trying to achieve. I use this to rip apart off the shelf ammo to try to reconstruct it if I liked its performance in the past or to investigate why I'm only getting maybe a 3 MOA or larger group out of it. Sometimes it's the inconsistency of the charge weight or the weight of the projectile varies too much. Sometimes it could be just be a combination of the velocity and projectile weight that my rifle doesn't like to shoot it, and it never will. I also use this if I'm testing new loads and start seeing signs of overpressure. Then I can deconstruct the rounds rather than shooting them and risking damage to the weapon or having to just throw them in the trash. Last thing you really need is some kind of reloading data. I have a small booklet here that's from Cabela's that's sold for $8. These are cartridge specific and contain information for several different brands of projectiles and powders. It's an okay source. I bought it just to see what was in it. I haven't used it much. It does have a lot of blank spaces on the page for notes. I usually find the page that closely matches what I'm actually reloading and then write down my notes on that page. Um, and a notebook would have been cheaper, but I just wanted to buy this book to see what was in there. This is the Leave Reloading Manual. It was $20. It's a good source of information for beginning reloaders, and it covers almost anything you could want to know when you're just starting out. This was my best source of information when I started reloading. It got me a lot further than just watching the videos. It has a lot of data in the back for different loads, and I like how the data is organized. It has several different cartridges. Each cartridge section starts with a picture with important dimensions on it, case capacity, and what type of primer you should use. After the picture, there are several sections for each projectile weight, sections for pure lead projectiles, and coated projectiles. Each of these sections will list several types of powders with good starting charge weights, maximum charge weights, maximum pressure, and expected velocity. In this manual, the suggested charge weight is listed in grains, volumes, and cc's, and the lead dipper sizes and how many scoops you should use. The part I really like about this manual is the order that the powders are listed. The powder at the top will have the highest velocity and uses up the most case volume. Usually my most precise groups come from using that as my selected powder. Even this manual is not a required purchase, because with every die purchase, usually you get an information packet, at least with the lead dies. One side has their guarantee, the other a picture of the die kit that you just bought so you know what's in it, and as you can see this one's for 45.7. And when you open up the packet, one side will be step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the dies and how to reload the cartridge. And the opposite side will list some of the more popular reloading data for that cartridge. It is laid out in the same method that they use in the Lee reloading book. You can also source your reloading data on sites such as Hodgton.com for free, and when Hornady releases a new product, they will usually publish reloading data for that product for a short time. So make sure if you come across one on Hornady, you save it for later reference. Depending on what extras you buy, this stuff could cost you up to $66, but like I said, it's not really needed. 
As far as the money savings, most people will tell you that reloading is expensive and you'll never save money or cover the cost of your gear. If you count your time and put a price on it while you're making the rounds, that might be true. If you look strictly at the round components for the cost and the equipment cost compared to off-the-shelf ammunition, then it is possible to recover the cost of your initial reloading equipment. For me, this is a hobby. I like going out in the garage and spending some time reloading, relaxing, so I don't have to really place a cost on my time. For example, in the next video, I'll do a basic cheap 223 round. This round will be a 68 grain Hornady hollow point boat tail over 22 grains of H335. It groups about the same as PMC's 55 grain full metal jacket, which is sold in stores for about $9 a box of 20. As you can see from these two targets I posted, they group almost exactly the same. For cost, new cases cost about $34 per hundred. Now these cases aren't a one-time use, you'll get about 10 firings out of them at least, making the cost for this component of the round about $0.03 cents per round. Or you can collect your friend's empties if they don't reload for free. The projectiles that I used were a nice Hornady hollow point boat tail costing $20 for a box of 100 so that's $0.20 cents per round on this component. Small rifle primers cost about $33 for a thousand, or $0.03 cents around for this component. Last there's the powder. This is my cheap plinking round so I use the H335. It was only $28 a pound and a pound has 7,000 grains in it. As I said before I'm using 22 grains a round allowing me to get about 318 rounds from every pound of powder making the cost for powder around nine cents per round. This is the one area where the cost per round can vary wildly depending on what type of powder you choose and how much powder you use per round. Total cost for my round is 35 cents. The off the shelf ammo is 45 cents per round. I just randomly picked a powder and a charge weight for this round. If I'd actually done some work and some tuning on the round, which I will cover in my third video, and I would have a round that would outperform the PMC ammo in addition to the 10 cents savings. Total cost of all the tools I showed in the, this video was $307. I could have my equipment paid for just by reloading this round in roughly 3,000 rounds built. I could switch to a 55 grain Hornady full metal jacket and save an additional 10 cents per round, cutting that number of rounds needed down to 1,500 rounds built. Or with a little work, build a superior round outperforming even the Hornady Custom Match, which costs $20 for a box of 20. And in that case, I would only need to reload 472 rounds to make up the cost of the reloading equipment. But really, there's in doing this, there's no way to put a price on ammunition that is built specifically for your rifle. In my case, I use a 16-inch barrel AR platform with a 3 MOA red dot sight on it, and I don't usually shoot it past 100 yards, so the 3-inch groups that I showed earlier on the targets is fine. I hope you like this reloading equipment video. I will be working on the intro or basic how-to reloading video and hope to have it up next week. In that video I'll cover die setup, equipment use, and show you how to reload that cheap 223 round. And then in the third video I'll go more in depth into how to build rounds that match specifically to your rifle. If you have any questions or comments leave them below and I'll respond. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos. Have a great day.